Uh, the main question is, is this available to us, the recording? And the answer is yes. Go to leanleadership.guru. There's a blue button there, and it says join our online office. You can get a seven-day trial free, so just apply for it. You'll get a, an email back uh, telling you how to join. Now, when you go in, along the top, there is a documents icon. You'll find the documents icon. Click on that. Then you'll find webinars. Then you'll find Jeff Liker webinars, and it's in there. Uh, Jeff, thank you very much for doing this again um, each month. You're so consistent. Thank you. Go ahead. So the reason that we have a Kata, and again, Kata is a term that Mike rather used but doesn't apply to Toyota. It's, it happens to be a Japanese term that applies to practice routines in order to develop the muscle memory so that when you learn a golf swing, you can repeat it comfortably without thinking about it. And we need to learn a lot of routines and habits, good habits, for any complex skill. We show here swinging a golf club, we show playing guitar, uh, and even the rock guitarist that looks like he's uh, going crazy and uh, laid back and uh, doesn't even have to think about playing. The reason he can do that is because of all the many hours of practice developing routines that now, be, now come naturally. And he can look like he's having fun and he can hold the guitar even on his head and play the guitar and he can uh, perform to the audience and focus on the audience because of all the kata, all the routines that have uh, become a part of his uh, uh, brain functioning. So the role of a kata or practice routines is to develop skills in the right way and then once you develop the right skills, then you can execute them. And you don't have to keep on going back and fixing them. How does that apply? Any organization that wants to go deep and get to continuous improvement is going to need to develop people with the skills, both on the technical side of using tools like Kanban, and also on the process side of how we approach a problem, how we approach improvement. And therefore, we're going to need organized, practiced routines so that there's something to do, something to practice every day. And we have a standard to know, are we doing it well or are we not doing it well? And we need a coach because we're not very good at self-feedback. So this is a, a pretty big commitment. And we're really uh, implementing the culture one person at a time. Each person who practices, who gets, develops these routines, it starts to change their way of thinking, and they're now, start, they're now uh, socialized into the culture. So we, we have one light bulb that's gone on, and now we want as many light bulbs as we can in the organization, hopefully all the leaders at least. The strengths and traps of developing lean coaches and having an explicit focus on doing that are that we can do it well or poorly, and this is something that's very easy to do poorly. It's easier to do 5S even half-heartedly and have it be done okay, uh, so we can see the place is cleaner and neater and we can find stuff. Developing lean coaches can, in most cases, is done poorly because they, because Companies are not following what we know about how you develop skill. And uh, what the good thing about this is that we know if you want continuous improvement, if you want improvement every day, as opposed to hot jobs, as opposed to superficially going across the company, we have to have the bench strength. And the bench strength comes from our employees who are there every day and who are committed to the company. So we know that's necessary for success if we define success as continuously improving, adapting to the environment, uh, being able to respond relatively quickly to uh, changes in the environment. We uh, also have people who know the company and have some degree of commitment to the company who are now driving the improvements. We can build high levels of technical expertise, so the same way of 
developing cognitive, developing skills can be applied to learning how to develop software, to learning how to weld correctly, uh, safely, with high quality. Uh, it could be applied to repetitive jobs. It could be applied to non-repetitive jobs. And it's most effective if line managers learn to be coaches, both of the technical skills to do the job and also the method for improving how you do the job. The potential traps are microwaved lean experts. Send them to training for 10 days, get them a certify, certif certificate from a prestigious place, and call them lean experts. And then they're pretty much on their own. They talk to each other, they struggle along, but they don't have practice routines. They're not getting a lot of outside feedback from very experienced people who know what should be happening, and therefore they devolve to uh, kind of okay but not very good habits in improvement. So the internal knowledge becomes shallow. Uh, we may develop certain technical skills, particularly uh, I know companies will hire our industrial engineering students from Michigan, and within a year they're transforming big parts of plants and big parts of offices and given incredible responsibility when they have almost no work experience. And that's because they're good with Excel, they're good with PowerPoint, they can easily create a standard worksheet, they, they understand the tools, uh, but they really don't have the maturity for change management. Since this is driven by a staff function, uh, it, there's not ownership online unless we take the time, patience, and coaching to develop the managers at the Gemba and to develop their skill levels. Finally, the value stream model line approach is the preferred approach Toyota uses. For example, they have TSSC that works with outside educational institutions, charities, and private companies. They always pick a area and they develop a model line and they're really doing value stream transformation. So they're getting above isolated process improvements or tool implementation and they're actually looking at some process. So when they worked with the New York City Food Bank they didn't go across the food bank that does all sorts of things for New York City. They picked something and it, the first thing they picked was the Thanksgiving dinner and you had uh, thousands of poor people in different parts of the city standing online to get their Thanksgiving dinner sometimes for hours. And that was a pain point and they picked that for a demonstration project and they were able to get people through often in minutes instead of hours and waste less material and serve more people uh, and in order to do that they didn't bring in a preset number of tools to deploy. They looked at the situation, they worked with the managers, they analyzed the current state, they tried some things, they piloted them before Thanksgiving, they worked out the bugs, uh, and by the time Thanksgiving hit they had a well-functioning system from supplier to an assembly line to serve the customers, to how the material was organized, to how the people were trained, to standard work, they had a whole system operating. And it was mind-blowing to the people involved. What value stream analysis can do then is to provide a way of bridging the gap between here we are, we have to understand our current state, we have to have a vision of our future state for this value stream, for this limited value stream. It might be uh, accounts receivables, uh, for this part of the business, we're going to isolate an area. It might be in a plant. We're going to look at the assembly process uh, for Boeing. And once we've isolated that area, put boundaries around where we're going to focus, then we're going to transform that over time. It usually takes three to six months. And the purpose is going to be to develop some coaches maybe staff coaches, a few engineers, the managers in that area, and the senior management. And they all will be students 
learning at the Gemba from that actual transformation. And they're going to learn to use whatever tools are needed to achieve the future state vision. And it'll be spaced out over time so that they'll, they'll be getting uh, some lecture, some concepts, and then immediately implementing those concepts, seeing the results, making adjustments based on what happened. So it will be a PDCA cycle uh, over and over again, and there'll be deep learning by those who are directly involved in that transformation. This is an example from the field book of a generic value stream map that is pretty common in a manufacturing plant that does some fabrication and then assembles something and ships it. And it's also a good generic map from lots of other types of processes. What we show here is the future state, and in this future state, the final process where we're flowing product to the customer, this might be assemble, assembly. Uh, so for example, let's say we build the parts, some of the components for gear shift levers, and we have some supplied parts, and then we assemble the gear shift levers for different customers, for different products. And what we're showing here is that we have leveled the schedule for the sequence of what gear shift levers we make and for the tact, for the timing of the gear shift levers. And there's flow from one stage of assembly to another and we're building to a supermarket and replenishing that supermarket as customers uh, use these gear shift levers as we ship them. Uh, and then we're pulling from some process that perhaps stamps out metal parts that are used in the gear shift lever levers. And that's in our company, that's in the same plant. And they're building to a supermarket that we're pulling from and they're building based on Kanban. And then outside we have suppliers who are also building and shipping to Kanban. Uh, so we have a connected flow and we have a leveled schedule and uh, things are moving, the product's moving and we're on time for these gear shift levers and let's say we pick the Ford gear shift levers uh, because they have their own cell and uh, for the rest of the plant we're just ignoring it for now uh, We're from a lean point of view. So in other words this what we're showing with this uh, map is number one it's a future state it's not a current state. The current state was done that was essentially thrown away when we developed the future state. Uh, and this is where we want to go. The current state showed us where we are. We have a clear picture of what we want the material and information system to look like and we've divided it into loops. So we have smaller pieces to work on. So somebody's going to be working on the pacemaker loop which is assembly which sets the pace of production. We make a gear shift lever every minute and that paces the whole operation. Uh, then we have an intermediate process loop. We stamp out metal parts and perhaps we weld them together with robots and uh, that's uh, inter internal processes that have to be improved so that they're building not to a schedule but to actual demand from Kanban in sequence. And then we also have a supplier loop which is outside to get them to build just in time and uh, high quality. So now we have three distinct areas to improve. And then we have Kaizen bursts that are what we have to do if we're going to achieve these future states. So for this for assembly one of the things we have to do is we have to balance work. We also have to reduce defects. We also may have to create standard work. We may have to improve uptime of handheld uh, guns used for attaching things. Uh, and similarly in uh, the intermediate process we might have things to improve like reducing changeover or uh, improving uptime of equipment. Now in the Terracotta terminology each of those Kaizen bursts becomes a target condition. And that's a little bit different way of looking at it. It's not 
something to implement. We're not implementing standard work. We're striving towards standard work. Our target condition is that there's a standard way to assemble and each assembler who does that particular job will do it in the same way until we come up with a better way, which will then be incorporated into the standard work. That's what a condition we have to achieve, both by having the standard work written out and by getting people to buy into it and use it and actually improve upon it. So it's behavioral change as well as a tactical change. Something in the air.